Record. There we go. Alright. Next episode of the Paint Nerds. Like, is it me or is it really, really fuzzy? It is fuzzy. Is it fuzzy? Well, one way to fix fuzzy. Shave? Well, I mean, that's one way to do it. But yeah, this is the terrain episode. So hopefully things go better here than... There it is. Get rid of fuzzy. Look at those mugs. Yeah. Still yeah, ugly. Focus. Yeah, we're focused though. We're, fo we're, we're ugly focused. Fugly focused? Yeah, let's nice. go with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, today's episode, as long as everything works, we've been having a lot of technical issues. Mm -hmm. uh, is all about terrain and building up terrain. Uh, the manliest of the arts, landscape. And not the, you know, manscaping. But, uh, so you have a we have a couple ways to go about this. Uh, one of the cheats that I like to use is, like, sand, kitty litter. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're paused again. God damn it. Oh, there, there, we're, back. we're back. Hey, we're back. Hey, we just got a curse. <laughs> Whoops. Please forgive us. Yeah, like no, I said. No, we have to curse to get it to fix. Oh. Yeah, that's what happened. It, so we're you using. Said, you said, God damn it, and then it started working God again. God damn it. Man See, logic. Perfect. If All it right. cusses, yep. yeah. It's only stupid if it doesn't work. Right. So you can use kitty litter, paint, glue, Mod yep. Podge. Uh, like I was telling him, you can even go outside and scoop up dirt out of the yard and sift it and use that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even use all this really cool stuff where it's basically different colors of turf that you can, like, you literally just open it up to spoon it on. You can... You know, if you're using a whole area and you need to make it, you know, scattered a little bit, you can use the... It's basically seasoning for your... Yeah. You know. Add a little bit of spice to your landscape. Yeah. Um, the other thing I do um, at the big box stores, you can get, like, the jug o toys, like dinosaurs, stuff like that. Nine times out of ten, they come with these cool little... Find a... There we go. The light... Light spot. Yeah, cool yeah. little tree. We can do this. Oh yeah. Plants. Rocks. No kid wants to play with them. But we can. Our executive producer's not gonna cry. Oh daddy, you stole my rock. I was looking for that rock for my dinosaurs. They don't care. They genuinely don't. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Yeah, paint them and glue them just paint them, throw some, a uh, little bit of like Astro Granite or something like that on there for some texture. Add some dry brushing if you yep. really want to get like super goofy. Mm -hmm. Boom, done. Yep. Call it a day. Also, if you have a huge size miniature, um, you can cut the base off and use for rock work. Mm -hmm. Like I did with this Triceratops. Yeah. As a little something extra. Mm -hmm. Can now, you make tactical rocks with it? Tactical rocks. <laughs> there you go. Now, one of the cool things about terrain is you, with the right usage of like color scheme and props, you can literally put your model or your miniature or whatever you're working with in a time capsule. Mm -hmm. Like it's literally locked in space at a very particular point in time. And nobody can take that away. Like, I've been watching a lot of really cool videos where uh, people are using resin and stuff like that to make the, you know, these creatures kind of in stasis. What was that toy back in the 90s where it was like a gel medium and you could like stick things in it? You remember that? You remember what I'm talking about? I do, but don't, don't ask me to remember a name. Like, it was like an alginate or something goop. I, you can suspend all your like micro machines and Hot Wheel yeah, stuff in, and like, you can have like the space battles and all that garbage. Don't don't ask me oh, to man. remember a name. Don't don't ask me to think of a name. We're gonna remember it as soon as we stop recording. We'll be like, aha, it was this. Yeah. If that, we remember it, we'll. <laughs> we're not gonna put it in the show notes. <laughs> Let's be real. We. I mean, it might get into the show thing. notes if we can. If we, we ever do, we'll show probably notes. look it up while we're waiting. Or if you're watching. 
you know, leave a comment, hey, it was this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it, the, the cool part is, is like if you do your, your miniature right, and you do your terrain properly, you can literally enclose that in some plexiglass yeah. and put a nice little top on it. And you've got this entirely like pristine, it's almost habitat, mm -hmm. you know, for your miniature. And I think that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I enjoy it. But before we get into actually painting one, uh, the last episode, I kind of sprang on Chris <laughs> the the mechanized assault game that yes. our friend George is getting ready to put up on Kickstarter. So, plug. Yeah, plug. Shameless. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Mechanized assault. Um, and the, the miniatures are looking pretty the cool. The miniatures look badass. So, we're going to give you a preview of... The mechanized assault spicy chicken. The spicy chicken. The caliente pollo. Okay. And here it is. It's got the cool little. I don't know if those are. Those look like flamethrowers, really. With some. It's got the tanks under, so they got to be flamethrowers. Hence the spicy. Yeah. You know. Spurs on the back, much like uh, a chicken. We're dead. Uh, curse! Damn it! So bitch. Poop. And we're back. No. And we're back. And, and we're back. back. Yeah, we're back. Hey, hey, we're back. Hey. Hey. So, spicy chicken, mechanized assault, getting ready to go on Kickstarter. There will be a live of mm. Chris and myself and George actually painting uh, basically our faction's version yes. of the, you know, Caliente Pollo. And with that, I, like, I, I'm going to ask, you know, you build up your mm -hmm. your country and your faction. I'm going to do a little write-up for my faction so George can throw that in there. Okay. Uh, and the ones that are painted by George, myself, and Chris will be put up as, you know, prizes for the highest tier of, you know, uh, donation to the Kickstarter? Yeah, uh, basically um, anyone who, if you fund at a certain level awesome if you fund, at, if you're like the highest funding yeah. person you will get the uh, the custom painted custom spicy painted chicken. spicy chicken and I, I, I don't know, if I think it's just going to be a random bit because it's all the same price yeah. So I, I don't think it's going to be like I, I think if they I think the actually I think the person who donates can choose. Oh, cool. So, so I, the person I, who donates the most can choose which one they like the best. Yep. And, and nuts to the other two. Yeah. <laughs> nuts to the other two faction painters. Uh, and I'm going to tell you right now I'm going to go out of my way to make my faction just stupid, like. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do the greatest. You're gonna be the Mel job. Brooks character, the Mel Brooks version of this game. Well, like the the character I have built up is like the commander of his faction is like an homage to some of the you know members of my family that were in the military. Just the stupid stuff that I used to do as a kid with my friends, and uh, as a matter of fact, two of my best friends growing up are the names of this character and I'm not going to tell you what it is you're going to have to you're going to have to guess um, and now did he sidebar did he design these mechs I think he did damn that's awesome yeah I mean I'm not too sure how he got the mechs but the like some of the stuff that I've been reading about it this is this is kind of a, a mech game that doesn't require a whole lot of, outside of imagination which is handy. And the cool part is, is you can use like Warhammer terrain. Yep. Which is awesome. It's mm -hmm. in the same scale. Um, and one of the best parts that I thought was really cool is, you know, you could get a transformer, like a little $1 transformer and paint it up yep. or just leave it as is and give it stats. And there you go. You mm -hmm. have your mech. Uh, you can, you can adjust mechs of the same size like from different games to use in this it's kind of like an ad hoc system okay so it like you could use your model here it's 28 millimeters so that would be a, a medium or a heavy mech 
you know, it, but it's in the shape of a gorilla. Right. It's a robo. It's a robo it's gorilla. A, it's a rogue animatronic. <laughs> yeah. There you go. A rogue <clears throat> animatronic that somebody happens to be piloting. <laughs> or it could be given an AI. You never know. Yeah. Uh, and the I always thought it was funny because you know when I think of miniature games, I don't think of it as a single player game. Hmm. This actually has the ability to be a single player game, like you could play it by yourself. I've seen several recently like that, and yeah, it's starting to gain some prominence. It's yeah. it's cool. It's weird, but it's really cool. Yeah, uh, and it's it it they have a mat uh, like the mat they that oh, he has dude. developed is it. Like, when you play Warhammer, you actually have to sit there and think about where you're going to put mm -hmm. terrain, how much terrain you're going to put somewhere, and all the other fun stuff. This one, you don't have to. It's got all the markers for yep. you. You don't have to worry about, okay, I need X number of card sizes to do a deployment zone, and they can't be within this space of the other areas. It's, all, it's built into the mat, and it looks... It it fits with the scene the scenery. Yeah, and it's it's actually pretty cool. I I like the fact that they made it dirt simple, mm -hmm. and I like the fact that like they literally went out of their way to reduce the math and yeah. and the you know the bookkeeping uh, because the bookkeeping can actually deter a lot of players. Yeah, it's I don't want to play stats the game. Yeah, if I want to do that, I'll play you know. 3.5 DD. <laughs> the cool part is if they can come up with 10K, they're gonna actually going to make an app for the game. Yes. Which, which I'm hoping they do because the app's going to be like, imagine being able to put your miniatures on a table, just grab your phone and bring up your app, and you could have all of your army, you know, your entire squad set up, and you can click on one and you know it's movement. You know, it, I mean, they could probably even implement a dice rolling apparatus. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to worry about it. They could probably, you know, they, they could add a lot of stuff to it. So basically all you really need is, like, you won't even need the mat. You could just sit there and go, okay, well, I'm going to do this. And you just sit there and go, okay, my dude's here. You just put a little marker down. Mm -hmm. And that tells you medium mech. Okay, I'm going to use this. And it rolls the dice based off of your weaponry. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to worry about buying anything. You know, you just yeah, honestly, you just you just buy the rule book and download the app, and you know you can add all the stuff to the app. They're, but you should buy things. Oh yeah, you should because absolutely. They look cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it's he literally designed it for single player. Like, yeah. who th who literally makes a game and then thinks about that? Like, I've never once saw any game that comes into any game store that literally thinks of a single player. Like I. I'm 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 stuck doing my own thing half yeah, the time. Yeah, it's like all the times that I've seen them, it's like it's tradition. It's a traditional multiplayer game, but you can adapt it to be a single player game if you wanted. Yeah. Uh, man, this new diet. Wife has me on a new diet because oh, wife's yeah? on a new diet, and you know it's amazing. It's foods I never thought I would ever eat. I'm I'm eating, and they actually taste good. Like chia seed pudding. We're going to unwrap that at a later date. <laughs> Terrain. Landscaping. <laughs> it's like boba tea, but you Oh, I do, I do love boba tea, but... I've never had boba tea. Really? Never. There's one down on Manhattan you, you should try out. No, I'm, I, 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 when do I have time? Like, you make it sound like I have infinite time. Well, actually, technically we do. <laughs> He's finite. I'm finite. This, wrong tool. Don't use this. Uh, so yes, terrain. Yes. Um, so what we have is a uh, Nolzer's miniatures, not Kong, giant ape. Uh, glued it to a deli tray just because I thought it looked cool and I could use it to store stuff like paints and stuff, or use it as a dice tray, what have you. That is probably the most awkward dice tray ever. Just, just gonna throw that out there. Well, just no. You, you store it, and then when when it's time to play, you pop it open. You do, you brother. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyhow. So anyway, we could just show off different um, techniques that we could put on here. So Ooh, I get to do some training. Yeah. Like, are we using the whole? We can use as much or as little as you want. Um, so I've already kind of based it with uh, dryad bark from. Actually, it peels right off. 
Oh, I'm sorry, it was a. I can. I got Lindsey Grace from. I got something that'll make that stay. If you want that to stay on here. Actually, no. Actually, what? I have other plans. <laughs> it's fine. Part of the plan. It's not supposed to make that noise. That's because the glue broke. I can make that stick. I I don't. I'm thinking now. I don't want it to. <laughs> After I cut off the to, uh, triceratops, I was like, it's a lot more versatile as a diorama if you can like take the main figure out and put new ones in. I don't know. I like. I'm fickle like that. So drag and drop models, huh? Yeah, drag and drop models. Put some I, mag put some magnets in there. Yeah. All right. All right. Fully feasible. So, so how are you going to start? So I'm going to throw some Sterling mud. Actually, no, I'm going to throw some. Where's my dry bar? Because if you're going to do that, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out. If I can find everything, there's no guarantee I'll be able to pull this off. So what I'm going to do is take some dryad bark and fill in the area that I just peeled the miniature off of. My executive producer is trying to assist. You want a gorilla? Here. Here. You want to paint? Here you go. He wants... Ah, it's so much easier when he naps through these. I gotta run into the office because right. I think what I'm. Did you? Do we want to make some snow? Uh, no, it's a jungle scene, so right. not this ah, time. This. So I'm just <laughs> painting over the big empty hole. Here, I got something. Ooh. Look at this. So apparently, it comes in big bottles. Did not know that. Watch out, Bubba. It's almost like I'm, and I'm not really following any grain or texture with the paint. I'm just get going for coverage because we're going to cover it up. This is a base layer. And everything is going to go on top of this. Actually, while it's still wet, you could do some of the flocking. Oh, you want to use glue flocking, man? Oh, yeah, I know. You're asking. You're asking for trouble doing it any other way, really. So we're gonna make Here, this off. a texture to kind of go along with what he's doing. And I totally didn't. Uh, while you're back there, could you grab my? Uh, in the box, you're gonna see the uh, Earth Tone. The it's in the shake bottle. Yeah. Thank you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use some of this anti-skid additive, some dryad bark, and my own custom earth shade. And we're gonna add some texture around the uh around the base to kind of give it a, a build up because we used what, what you end up doing is you start around the base to kind of build it up so that way you can put your characters in the center and it reduces a lot of uh, need for useless things like uh, like you're, it keeps you from having to force yourself to hide that you know you're using a lid. So then what I do is I actually pour a, a sizable amount. Like it, it doesn't seem like much, but I'm actually putting a sizable amount in there, and I mix it until I get the consistency I'm looking for. And what I'm trying to make is kind of this muddy, dirty, almost swampified kind of grit. And it kind of translates pretty well into that. 
So, I mean, if I were to, like... If you need a spatula? See. I mean, I I could use one. But I'm not done with my mix. i got to weigh out some colors real quick. Because I, I want to make this more of a... I wanted to add a little yellow into this to kind of... Lighten it up with a little yellow. And you're, you're, I, I know you're asking, why are you using yellow? And yellow, amazingly enough, will lighten up brown and kind of give it more mm -hmm. of a tanned. Like, it gives it a surlish color. Like, it's been sitting there and bacteria has been allowed to, you know, do its thing and, you know. So I'm going to use some Averland Sunset. Yeah, just like this. I'm gonna mix that in. See how it got that kind of dried, more. It's kind of fetid. Looks like poop, <laughs> which is what I'm going for. So then, what I'll do is I will literally, because I'm lazy. Is I'm really not lazy. It takes more effort to come up with ideas right. than it. <laughs> that it does to actually just go out and buy stuff. So what I can do is I can literally just pile this in here. And then I can actually dig in to make texture. So while this is doing this, I'm literally just creating textures. And so it's like finger painting in mud. And you can actually, you know, straight, you know, kind of trail it off. You can, you know, you can just keep bordering, just dumping more in. Like I'm actually just gonna fill this in just to see what happens, and kind of build this up until, like, I'm gonna take this whole corner over. Go for it. I, I wasn't asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that we have this all set up, you can already see how it literally had like an overhead view like it actually has a lot of that like stomped in mud texture like you have bacteria building up on it you have you know you have all this you know you have this movement in the in the in the landscape so then you could take your spatula and you can kind of dig in and kind of swirl and kind of make this whole piece kind of just sit see how I'm flattening it all out and I'm making it look like it's it's mud that's been sitting there when this dries oddly enough it's going to have a lot of its own life into it so, now if I wanted to get like super crazy, I could add uh, flocking to this to kind of make it a, you know, with vegetation kind of going up. But notice, it looks like mud. Like you've got mud. Yep. Like straight up mud. And it's mud that if you were to see the Kong on it. Or the not the, Kong. The not, where's your... The, 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 the three horned one. Triceratops is not name is not a trademark. <laughs> so like so you could actually have this in here and you know you'd have the you know you'd have the mud inside the you know it's pen. You know. And that's one way of making really muddy terrain. Now to be a total jerk about things, well, not really. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna use some of the flocking that I have here. Looks like potpourri almost. Yeah, but it's actually rubberized wood. Huh. And I'm gonna stick that right there. I'm literally just gonna add kind of vegetation into this that 
kind of just gives it more depth, honestly. What's going on out there? Sounds like there's a delivery or something. Let me check because we have delivery showing up. Yep. So while that dries, I'm just kind of showing what showing off what I've been working on to the side. Um, cutting back all of the rock work surrounding the base of the giant ape um, so that he can basically fit more in. It gives him a smaller footprint literally on the base so we can fit more stuff around the base and kind of fit him in to that as opposed to a relatively large square or circle that he, we'd have to keep clear we now have reduced the footprint of him so that we don't need to we don't need to sparse out as much dead space as we would traditionally and one reason this method of of work of basing works best is it gives you the ability to create an environment like I could theoretically just take this tree and set it up in this corner and I could put more stuff around it to make it look like it's actually fitting into the environment right. I mean it's I mean I'm not going to cuz I mean I don't know how it's going to play out but I mean in theory we could easily do I was actually that. thinking something like that for maybe this corner over here to glue it down and then build like mud and flocking around now, it. George is probably going to hate me, but proof in point, you know, we could put this mech in here and if this mech were just the, just the feet. I'm not going to cut that off the base. That base is a very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we could put it in here and even if it's on the base, I mean, this could literally be just kind of a metal scrap inside of a muddy battlefield. Yeah. And it works. Like we have multiple venues in which we, can, in avenues in which we can add, you know, a miniature here. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to find one that I have that doesn't really have much in the way of a base. I know I had one floating around here somewhere. Like I have like nine thousand miniatures and I can't find a single right. one of them, which is disturbing. We're Truly. literally filming this in a miniature shop. Right. Which one are you looking for? Uh, it was a space marine. Uh. I feel like I saw it recently. It was but a green space recently, marine. Recently might have been three weeks ago. Right. <laughs> it was a green space marine. I know I had it here somewhere. Like it's Filming cool. live, kids. Yeah. One take. Yeah. Because we, we we do not believe in preparation, <laughs> You're scripts. Not wrong. You're not wrong. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. The reason we do it this way is... To let you know that a lot of the stuff that we deal with and a lot of the stuff that we do is stuff you're going to do mm -hmm. or stuff you do already, and it's it's not bad. Yeah. Like, just because you do things in a weird way does not make you a bad person. It doesn't make you any less a uh, miniature artist. It doesn't make you any less of an artist in general. It just shows that even with everyday things... You can literally, in everyday life, you can be as weird and as goofy as you mm -hmm. want to be and still be the productive members of society. I'm not. Yeah, I, I strove <laughs> with that crap for a long time. All right, so I got the rest of the terrain, included terrain base off of the mini, and now you can see he has, will take up much less actual board space and we'll be able to put more stuff around him so long as we leave like two half dollar US sized spaces on the board. And he's still relatively stable. Relatively <clears throat> stable. What the hell do you classify as relatively stable? There, see? See, mouse see how off camera see how off camera stable he is? <laughs> well, hold, on, hold on, hold on. I can guarantee I can. See, they got him semi propped up against the. Oh no, he's not propped up against the mouse. I, I can yeah, move see? the mouse. And he's got to get still, him there. You know, but that's okay. Don't breathe. Sticky tack. Don't breathe on him. <laughs> Sticky tack yeah. is your friend. Or magnets. You can put some rare earth magnets in the base of the model, and then in the base of the train, or just a piece of metal underneath it, and he'll stick to it. 
and voila, mm -hmm. you are now making a miniature plastic rail gun. Yep. Uh, I can't believe I said that with a straight face. <laughs> Uh, and plus, now you have all this cool little scrap rock terrain that you can use at your leisure. Actually, no, I am going to build up a rock. Yeah, go I'm, I'm going to make you mad. Why was this make? Why would this make me mad? I don't know, cause I don't know. I'm an easygoing guy. You say these things. You're so abusive to me. <laughs> Damn it, Jazz! <laughs> <laughs> why would you glue that there? Why not? Because I am that guy. So, while that's going on... Alright, so... Let's readjust the scope so you can see what Chaz is working on. Because people really need to see that. Yep. I'm going to glue my tree down. I'm just using simple plastic glue that you can get at most hobby stores. Yeah. I'm actually using the Max Cure that I got mm. from uh, the Hobby Star next door. Great place. Love those guys. So I'll put that there. Yeah, you guys don't have to be like super, like precise. You're, especially if you're doing like rock terrain, because, like, I'm gonna make this look goofy as hell at the start. But when I'm done with it, it'll it'll look like a cool little terrain piece, like it was supposed to really be there. Mm -hmm. And this is all straight up practice makes perfect. This is not. This is not in any way, shape, or form, like. The tried and true, trusted, you know, oh, hey, this is how it has to be done type of thing. Because I don't do that. I just, I literally sit there, hmm, I can make a pile of rocks. And then I just got to make the pile of rocks, rocks look pretty, which is the, the goal. Yeah, the important thing is just make it look cool to you. Mm-hmm. And try to not make it, you know. Cool is in the eye of the beholder, really. Mm -hmm. I mean... As I said, cool to you, man. Eh? Yep. But what if I wanted to be cool for everybody else? Cool. God, man. I didn't say you could do that, Chess. <clears throat> yeah, because I listen. What? I wasn't listening. We like to have fun here on The Paint Nerds. Oh, yes. So much fun. I think I might need to steal your glue because mine is not flowing. Mm. Hey, I even got the speed set, so yeah, buddy. Do what you got to do. Because I'm wearing, I'm wearing chemicals. Yay, me. You're just making a paint paintbrush train. Oh, yeah? You know, like we did Once Upon a Time with Markers. So, just a standard tree that you could get in any kid's dinosaur jug from a big box store, glued down, and just keeping it simple. Yeah, I like my clear bottle for this. Throw a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We planned that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Filming, filming live, <laughs> or recording live, I should say. It's a little bit better on camera. There we go. 
You know nobody wants to see me do anything, right? This is all about you. Well, that's <laughs> that's sad because I'm tr that's bad viewing because I'm transfixed with what you're doing. <laughs> I like that word transfixed. So now what we do is a totally contentious pile of rocks. That are doing absolutely nobody any good. They're just sitting there. Just a huge clump of nothing. But a huge clump of nothing is going to actually have some really cool stuff going on. So you're going to see some weird shit happen. Just saying. Sorry for the swearing. It's just that's the fastest I have to, you know, make a word. All right. With that all done up like that, I'll give that a second to cure. So here is my pile of rocks. It, it is literally just a pile of plastic kind of wedged together. So, Indeed. <laughs> so the first thing I do is I actually take some white and I brush that whole thing white, as white as possible. Okay. And then I go over it with, you know, different colors. Then I can actually take this whole thing and kind of slap it into... Oh, we disconnected. We're not oh, no, we we're recording. Haha, <laughs> I thought the whole Remember, thing, remember yeah. that whole thing? So I could like, actually put this record anywhere. Record it and not go live this week. Yeah, I could put this practically anywhere. Center, there we go. And like I could put this right here, and it'll look like a pile of rocks in there. Mm -hmm. You can even put this front and center. Hey, you got a pile of rocks. You can put it like right here, right next to the tree, you know. Now we got rocks next to a tree. You know, you could put it in here and, you know, kind of build up on the train over here. Again, so, you could also put a magnet underneath it and you could move, move it, it wherever you yeah. want. Exactly. That's probably one of the coolest parts about this whole process is the fact that you are not required to do anything. Mm -hmm. So normally what I would do is I would, I, I try not to cheat because I know rocks do not look like mud. That is true. So, the way I do things is semi counterintuitive, but at the same time, you're kind of going, oh, now I see why. And this is where mixing and hope kind of come in. <laughs> Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix a layer paint because this already has a bunch of stuff on it that will paint will hopefully adhere to. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix two things. I got to parent for a second. Oh, you can parent away. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm actually going to mix some white scar with some black carbon black ink and. It's going to be more white scar than black ink. So I'm actually going to go for a, a gentle gray. I'm not trying to make direct gray, just a gentle gray. Something like, like I'm trying not even to go for a whole drop of black. Like just enough black ink to like... There we go. To make, there we go. It's a very nice gray. Like, it's not even, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in and just fill in all the space with this gray paint that I just made. And as it dries, it's going to roll into the contours. It's going to do its job and create uh, create those little grooves and textures that are way more important. So. And I added some... Uh,
some thinning medium to kind of help me with you know spreading the paint around that way you know I, I get the even coverage I get the I, I don't get a whole lot of brush strokes in the work uh, it doesn't look all gloppy hopefully so and you want to, you you don't want your rocks to look like you just glopped paint on them I mean, you could and there is a definitely a time and a place for all that this is neither the time nor the place uh, so i'm just trying to make sure that everything is even everything is as it should be you know, I'm, I'm getting all the colors, I'm getting all the, you know, getting everything kind of mixed where it needs to be. And when it's all said and done, it's all painted, it's all, you know, right here, right in front of you. And now we just let that dry. Like we now have a grayish rock. Voila, gray rock. Which already looks really good. It kind of weirded me out. I had every confidence in you, Chaz. Well, I'm glad one of us did. Because I didn't go into this thinking I was going to pull that off. So, oddly enough, I've created the gray tones that I needed. Because the next step is actually going to be adding earth tones to it. Actually, let me... So we're going to let that dry. And the cool part is these uh, when we start adding the earth tones, it's going to look like a more naturally asserted rock. It's not going to look like, oh, somebody just piled a clump of stones there. It's going to take in so it's going to take on a lot of natural look, a lot of natural hues and tones. And it's going to be it's little once you start putting this somewhere on the diorama, it's going to look and feel significantly better than just kind of oh this guy took a bunch of you know resin cuttings and glued them together and you know slap paint on there battery level that's that's a new one hmm. who knew So now that Chris is back, or back-ish. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. He's not going to hurt much, man. So now that we have the rocks drying, we have terrain down, you know, we need to figure out a path. Mm hmm. Oh, shit, that did come out really good. What? That did come out really good. Oh, the rock? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. So we need to figure out a path. Hmm. So there's two ways to do that. You take some glue and you go, nah, and then you drop stuff on it. Yep. And then, nah, and then you drop stuff on it. Or you can paint your path and do like lighter passes with the glue and kind of sprinkle stuff on there. Unfortunately, that, look, that, feel, that always feels forced. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to try to get away from that. We, we need to find a way to not make this feel forced. I'm looking around for stuff that we can add to it to paint. And I'm not seeing anything. Like, I feel like a horrible person. I, like, I want to teach people how to really do terrain really well. And I feel like I'm failing them. Um, what if we did a layer of, like, your battle mire? Mm -hmm. Like, paint that. And then dry brush over it. 
I mean, we could do that, but we would have to have it dry really fast, which yeah. means loud noise and hair dryer, right? Hmm. Which we could easily do. I mean, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Or there's a cheat we could do. And you're probably not going to like me much. But that's okay. I like it. <laughs> I like me. <laughs> So, we take, now when you do this, you have to do this fast, because there's not a whole lot of, you don't get a whole lot of time with this to do this. So get your spatula ready. Where did I, I gave it to you. Yeah, and I gave it back. I literally went. Hmm. Unless I didn't go, oh, I wait, think uh, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Here, now I'm going, hmm. Huh. Huh. Mm. So, and you put that in a blender. All right, gets to scooping and swooping, man. It hurts my eyes. So there's very good ventilation here. Um, I would I would recommend if you're in a smaller area to you know, yeah definitely respirator eye protection. Make it something, man. Yep. Quick, because then once you once you get in a line, I can spray it with that and. Wow, I did not think that was going to go nearly as good as it, that. It didn't, did it? It would be really good for, like, snow. Oh, we, we don't, don't worry about all that. I got this. So what we can do is we can literally just... We're adding just really quick... Okay. Texturing. You just said make something. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I was trying to get you to... To work with me here and make that a thing and kind of so that way you're not running through a crap load of battle mire. comes to worse, I can just go loop and then it's a good thing I have a file and I can just trim that. <laughs> so you like that kind of on thing? Yeah. Okay. So then what we do is and that should rapid set damn near everything. And then what we can do is we can just dab up all the loose liquid. Because this is all loose liquid and we still got stuff drying. Then what you can do. It's gonna sound weird. Again, just just work with me. Dig it. I know what you're thinking. It's like Chaz just ruined this whole thing. Not yet. <laughs> oh crap. Where's my Oh 
Ah, that is the last place we want that. <laughs> For those playing along at home, Chaz almost just spilled his cyanoacrylate and texture medium on the keyboard. So now you can go like this. Oh, okay. And you got the earth tone mixed in with the paint. That works really good. So it's literally just, you know, scoop up mm -hmm. and then you just dab in. You got, like I said, you got the earth tone kind of already mixed in. So instead of it, you know, doing the whole. Set it to dry it, it thins it out and adds a little bit of the yellow or what would that be? Ochre? Okra, yeah. It's exactly what it is. It's burnt okra. Mm -hmm. Much like umber, you can never find ochre properly cooked. It's always raw or burnt. I, I've never Sienna. had okra. So. You never had okra? You live in New Orleans, dude. Shh, no, I don't. Again, not mad, just disappointed. I Go get yourself some pickled lot. okra. Delicious. What? Delicious. Uh, Y'all eat weird gumbo? stuff here. Yes. Okay, you eat okra then. Oh, really? Yeah. Filet powder is just ground okra. Oh, I did not know this. Yep. I learned a thing. Well, sassafras and or okra. The hell is a sass or a frass? It's a herb that they pow uh, pound into a powder to thicken soups and stews. So as you can see, get that into shot. Make sure, I have my ring light. And this is one of the few times where you're not really thinning your paint, aside from the water on your brush and then the wash that's already on the texture. Oh yeah, there you go. And with the glue, it kind of gives a little watery effect to it. Mm -hmm. If you recall, when we started, that was a very flat um, paint with very little, if any, gloss in it. I'm trying to figure out why my light isn't so bright. I think it's just coming across that way on the screen. But yeah, so now you have the ability to set your dudes anywhere. Why I buy dirt cheap brushes right here with the toddler. Show that to the camera. Rip. <laughs> I don't even think I've used this one. Oh, maybe a little bit. Oh. So this is drying. Um, other thoughts on terrain? What do you think? Other uh, ideas. My idea is plan out first. Like, I, I literally try to plan out what I want. So the opposite of how we run the show. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, pretty much how what we did here is spur of the moment. We, mm -hmm. we literally just jumped in, did a thing, and called it. All Chaz knew was big gorilla, terrain, cheap dinosaur toys, and that was about it. Yeah. And that doesn't bother me at, at all. Uh... As a matter of fact, it was kind of fun. Because now that we have this, I mean, you can genuinely, like, literally put him right here. Mm -hmm. And he's still in that terrain without having to worry about, you know, space. Yeah. And then what I would do is I would literally try to figure out a way to, like, get these. I would kind of try to glue them off mm -hmm. into areas you wouldn't normally expect. Yeah, let's take that. So, yeah, you can cut... These are tree pieces from that traditionally stick on the uh, tree. But you could, actually I can cut one or two up. Because that seems to be the theme for me today. It's cutting up my, cutting up my toys, or more specifically my toddler's toys. And you can just kind of make it work to what you want it to do. Oh, 
right. Mm -hmm. So I cut cut a little piece out, and it'll now fit right there and make some ground cover. Or you can stand it on edge and make kind of a background, a backdrop for your uh, scene as you, as whatever your custom would be. And yeah, like I said earlier, since we cut the bases off of the minis, we can rearrange as we see fit. And you can, you know, have cool, you know, battle royales with your minis. You can use stuff like this as part of uh, D and D or RPG terrain system. Your call. Manufacturers originally intended and make some treetops. It's up to you. And the cool part is you can actually repaint a lot of those treetops. Well, yeah, I mean, these are repainted. That when I cut it apart, the paint peeled back. Ah. So you can actually. Which means you didn't prime it properly. I did. I did prime it, actually. But I didn't prime it well enough. Ah. Or it was never meant to be painted and then cut through. So. Touche. We learned things today, kids. Lots of things. How to do things, how not to do things, how to let your toddler destroy your paintbrushes. It's all good. Yeah. Ooh, now my rock looks dry. Yes, it does. Get up in there. So, we're going to make rock look like good rock. Like very, very nice rock. One uh, rock you don't find in the Mother Siberia. Wait, someone out there is just going to shoot me after that one. Or Louisiana. We don't have rocks down here. <laughs> So. so I got to shake to make sure it's all. Shake, 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 snore. Shake, do, 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 do. shake, shake, shake. Oh, no. We're not using that. <laughs> that got really crunchy. That, that was not what I knew. Oh, that just. Did I just. This brush is not getting clean. Why is that? Because I'm abusing my brushes. So Seems what I'm going to do is the episode, <laughs> right? There's a massacre occurring off camera with oh your with brushes. My cheap, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to run to Walmart. I'm sorry to large big box store. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add my earth tone directly to my brush. I'm going to charge it manu uh, basically charge it manually. <laughs> And then I'm gonna let's get this out of the screen so you can see it. It's gonna add more of a yellowy texture to the rocks, apparently. That's awesome ish. And I'm not done, so trust me, this is actually exactly how I planned it. Yep. So now that the rocks have like the, the ability to dry like that, I'm actually going to speed up the drying process real quick. And then I'm going to add... I have some camo shade too. If you want. I don't need camo shade for this. Okay. This is actually just using like the earth shades, like my home stuff and then aggro. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing? 
And this is how you know that uh, we get really caught up in everything we do. Like yep. we stopped talking the minute the yep. hair dryer went on. Focus. We can't focus for anything else, but. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now I need to go. Uncle Chaz doesn't want that. <laughs> All right. And because this is a jungle scene. Uh, you got to keep it. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is know where your environment is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I'll just use Argax Earthshade and it'll be perfect. No, it really won't. It'll just look flat. So then I go in with Argax Earthshade gloss because inside a rainforest or a, uh, like, a moist environment like rainforests mm -hmm. and jungles and whatnot is things are oddly wet yep. all Everything the time. Sweats. <laughs> you know, it's like you can sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, I'm out in the jungle and you wonder why you're breathing heavy and mm -hmm. why everything. We're just outside in our neck of the woods for 30 minutes. All right. It's an oppressive humidity. And so with this, we've created a wet rock that you would find glomped together in a rainforest or a jungle setting. Literally with a paint and two shades. Yep. Keeping it simple. Voila. Like rock. I present to you this the thing. <laughs> yeah, and legit. Oh, that's, yeah, that's not, that's nice. And yeah, just from scraps of plastic. And now if we were to actively put it on the the scenery, I could legit just put it right here mm -hmm. and it would look in place. Like, I mean, I can even put it right here and it would look in place. Yep. You could put it right here, it would look in place. You could put it anywhere and it would look in place wherever you put it. It's a it's a shiny rock. Yeah. Probably gonna need a little more earth shade on the inside of it, because I just gotta look at it from the camera and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh holiday spots. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not think about that. No, my fault. I fix it. Don't you worries. A bunch of modelers are watching this and cringing as we speak. Yeah, you're right. He, sh he, did, he did miss some spots. Yeah. Not wrong. Not wrong, little buddy. <laughs> so then we just trail it all in here. And what do you know? Fix it. I'm flipping off everybody on camera. <laughs> wow, I'm just really not with it today. Rock is done. I present to you faux show. Sure. Rock. Get it on. Get it in frame. <laughs> I present to you rock moves it out of frame. <laughs> rock. Rock that can go anywhere in terrain. So, as a matter of fact, you can just take that with you. Oh yeah. You can use it for whatever you want, man. It's your rock now. Sweet. I got a rock. And we've Just been like at this Charlie for an Brown. Hour. It's a sweet well, we've been, rock. Well, we've been successfully recording for an hour. Right. <laughs> you, you missed the entire, oh, God, oh, God, we're all going to die. The prologue. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, I didn't think this episode was going to happen. Yeah, we, we were touch and go there for a minute. So uh, now that you've seen how we handle terrain and all the other fun stuff, just go make your mistakes. Yeah. Have your fun. Kit like, bash. Yeah. Kit bash. Buy some cheapo terrain because you don't want to do it with the expensive stuff. Uh, be sure to thank your spouse mm -hmm. or your parents or whoever is helping you with this because you're going to make their lives miserable while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you have good ventilation. Yes. Yes. So, you good know, Lord. don't end up like in a 90s dare situation. <sighs> 
<laughs> you know, I I, was, I thought the whole huffing paint fumes was a joke, man. Until, that, that was no joke. Yeah, that was that was bad. You couldn't see off off site off screen. I was like waving it away from every from. Oh us. yeah, right into my eye holes. <laughs> Jesus, I don't have my balls anymore. They melted away. So as as usual, thank you for the save point for letting us you know record here. Thank you to Trolltooth Productions for their constant and continuous support. We um, yeah, we Thank we can't we couldn't have gotten this far without them. Thanks to our executive producer who, um, yeah, he stayed off camera and he stayed quiet for the most part. Hey, he had fun. It wasn't an, yeah. He's 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 learning how to use his paintbrushes. If that cost me five dollars from a big box store, it's worth it. And special thanks to our and a very super special Mother's Day thank you. Absolutely, to thank our you spouses. for putting up with us. Thank you to our mothers for wiping our butts. Yeah. Um, also, thank you to Mechanized Assault for getting in, getting us involved. Super excited. This is going to be fun. Mechanized oh, Assault yeah. is going to be great. I am like. The, the gears are so are turning. The lore that I'm writing in my head is just like... Bleh, so Something much. most people don't know about this game is you can write the lore yourself. Mm -hmm. You can literally write an entire faction and it's canon. The Florida men. The Florida men. Hey, oh my god. Yeah. We need to do I'm some spicy chickens men. in alligator print. Like literally make little alligator mechs. Like paint them in alligator. With cheetah, cheetah print leggings. Yeah. <laughs> My faction, it's I'm going to call it now, it's official, will be the Florida men. Um, we'll look duct tape, jerry-rigged, barely bolted together. If you're watching from Florida, you know what you did. You know why this is a thing. I've lived in Florida. I know. <laughs> you're, you're chiding and scolding an entire state. This is great. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> so anyway, this is Chaz and Chris from the Paint Nerds. Keep painting, guys.